Have you ever sent anything off in Slack to be approved? And then when you go ahead to approve it, you get this message that says this app is not configured to handle interactive responses and you're really not sure what to do about it. Well, in this video, I'm going to break down step by step on how you can handle these interactive responses in N8N using no code at all. So let's get into it. So the first step of what we want to do is go ahead into our Slack API application section and go ahead and select the application that we want to work with. If you have not already created your application, you're going to want to go ahead and create the new app from here. Watch a video on how to do that, then come back to this point. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and select the app that we want to use. And the setting that we want to actually go to or the future is going to be the interactivity and shortcuts one. So once you go into here, you're going to see that it's turned off and it actually gives you a um, simple explanation that any interaction with shortcuts, mo uh, models or interactive components such as buttons, select menus or date pickers will be sent to the URL that you specify. So we can simply turn this on. And when we do that, it says that we need to add a request URL to receive the HTTPS post. So keep that in mind that we're definitely going to need a post node. So once we're at this point, we can actually go ahead and hop into our N8N cloud and start building. So the first thing that we're going to need is going to be a webhook trigger. And once we get a webhook trigger, you can see that we have this very long URL as a get method. We're going to actually go ahead and select the production URL, and I'll explain why we do that um, in a second. And then also we're going to change the method to post. And now when you see our path, you can see that this matches up with whatever's here. And we don't need this long clunky name that just means nothing. We can actually go ahead and give it our name ourselves, which for this instance, because we're going to be handling with button clicks, we're going to name it button click. And then once you do that, that's all you have to do on this side. So now that you have this URL with this um, shortened, you know, customized um, kind of path, you can click it to um, copy it, go back into your Slack where it asked you for the URL and simply paste it in there. Once you paste it in there, you want to save the changes. And when it comes to anything done in this section, we are pretty much done. We don't actually have to come back into the Slack API apps at all. We simply just have to make sure that we have the URL in this place that you see here and we are good to go. So now that we have that, we can go back into our um, N8N and we can continue to build. Because from here, we're gonna actually need a code node. And I know I said in the beginning of the video that we're gonna be doing this with no code. Um, so you don't actually have to worry, you don't have to be a really good coder to do this. I'm gonna put all of the JSON data and JSON structures down below. So you can simply just copy them and add them into your own, um, into your own workflow. So now that we have a code node, you can see that it has just a bunch of random code already, and we don't really know what to put here. Why? Because we've never actually received anything. We don't know what the schema is going to look like when we actually receive our first webhook. So the reason why I actually chose to use our production is because this is how we're going to test it. If we hop back into our um, N8N server, you can see that the status is still the same. So we want to actually send another request now that we have this set up. And since that we use the production URL, a very important thing to keep in mind is you want to activate your workflow. Because once you activate your workflow, we're kind of saying, hey, we're ready to receive some requests. So let's test it out. The way we're going to test it is you're going to have to add another manual trigger. After that, you will just have to um, make a request to your Slack server. So we'll get a Slack node. Simply send and wait for a response. Once we have that, you want to select the correct um, account that you're going to be using. We're going to send it to our channel down here. And we're just going to say testing. We're going to keep the response type to approval, but we are going to change it to approve and disapprove because in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to handle and respond to both. So once we have all this, we can quickly go ahead and test this out. And you can see that it's waiting for our input. So we can go back to our Slack server and you can see the message testing is waiting there. Now that we have this message, we can simply click approve or decline. It doesn't matter. And it says that it got it. And we go back and you can see that we have nothing sent to us. Nothing has been changed. Nothing has been done because we have not actually done anything in the coding section. So if we go back into our, um, back into our workflow, we can open up the execution tabs and you can see these are our testing nodes, but there was actually one node that was sent to us. And once we open that up, we can see that it was sent to our webhook. 
And this is a really cool trick you can do when you're testing in N8N, when you're actually trying to test with production style um, methods or production movements. You can go into here, click your JSON, and you can actually copy that JSON data. So now we actually have a real life production test that we can use within our workflow. So if you go back to our uh, regular workflow, you can edit the JSON here and simply paste the previous data and save it. Now that uh, execution is pinned to this node and we can go ahead and figure out how to work with the schema there now. All right, so now that we have our um, payload kind of structured in a way that we can read it properly, the next node that we're gonna need is going to be the HTTP request node. The reason why we need the HTTP request node is because the first step was the webhook, so we received the information that we got. Second one was the code, we structured it, cleaned it up in a way that we can read it. And now we are going to use this request node to send back the information to our API or Slack API and let it know what to say. So once we first get into here, we wanna change the method to post because we're not retrieving anything. Like I said, we're gonna be responding. And now for the URL, it's actually going to be embedded in this schema. If you scroll down, we are gonna be looking for something called the response URL, which is right here under the state. And this response URL is the URL that we're going to need to send back the message. Because every time you generate or create an action, click a button, whether it's approve or decline, it's gonna have a specific code. So you can see this long little um, shortcut that is going to be the specific one for that button that we just selected. So it knows that, hey, whatever we're gonna send back, send it back to this exact button. So once you have that, we're actually going to send body JSON and we're actually going to be using the raw JSON structure. And I know I said in the beginning of the video, you don't really know how to have, don't know how to, um, don't have to know how to code, but there is a little bit in here. Like to be honest, you don't really know how to, know, need to know how to do it, but it comes useful when you're coming to um, structuring or organizing data. But that being said, for this video, I'm gonna have everything posted for you so you can just simply copy it and it'll work great. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and get our um, JSON structure. I've already built it out before, so I'm not gonna spend all the time typing it out here. So I'm gonna quickly just grab it. Yeah, I had it hidden down here. Copy. Put it right into here. All right. So you can see the first line is pretty much saying that do we want to replace the original text? This is what this is asking. Do we want to replace the original text with whatever you have? We do. If you put false here, that means we don't want to replace it. So if you had some conditions, whatever, then you can kind of apply them there. And then now when it comes to the text of what we want to answer, you can see that this JSON actions, it's very embedded into this full um, one line code. So we're checking everything and responding all within this one line. This JSON.actions responds all the way down to our block here. JSON actions text. You can see text, text. And that is actually the exact thing that we're looking for, whether this one says approve or decline. And it checks if it is approved, then set the status to be approved successfully. If not, make it declined. And simply, that's it. That's all that you have to do for this one. And when we execute this step, we can go back into our channel and you can now see it's been changed. It does say edited because, well, we just went in and edited it. So simply, it goes ahead and approves or declines all of this. And now, if you guys want, we can go ahead and actually test this in real time. So a way that we can do that is actually kind of setting up a dummy trial. So we'll go ahead and save this workflow. And instead of this um, click to execute, we're going to delete this and actually add another trigger, which is going to be on form submission because we're going to kind of, you know, set up a dummy trial of how someone can actually approve or decline documents in Slack. So you can kind of see how this is becoming useful, right? So we're just gonna say documents upload. And we're gonna say upload document, upload file. And then we're gonna add the form element to be the file. And we're gonna change it to file. Don't need multiple files, but this is a required field. And we can simply go ahead and just execute this and test it out. Go ahead and select any random file you have in your um, in your documents. It doesn't really matter. Submit that, and you can see that we have something received. Once we have this, we can actually go ahead and upload it to our Slack server. So we'll go ahead and grab Slack, upload a file, 
And you want to be careful because it automatically populates data. And I'm sure a lot of you are used to just having your binary files name data. But when you have it in a form submission, it does change it to whatever you had it in the form contact. So we had it as file, which means we have to name it file here as well. Make sure we're sending it to our select uh, correct Slack account. And we also want to add an option to send it to the correct channel, which we had set up for that. We can go ahead and execute that, hop into our channel, and we can see we have our document sent over. Now that we have that, we can attach it to our send and wait um, node and simply go ahead and execute that as well. Now you can see that it's waiting for our response. And now when we go ahead to approve or decline this, it should automatically use our interactive response and respond accordingly. So we'll do it both for approve and decline. Go ahead and click approve, got it, thanks. Once we go back, you can see it's been edited to say approve successfully. We'll do this one more time just to handle it with the, um, to do it with the decline button. So I'm just gonna uh, execute this last node to make it faster. Go back, hit decline. And once we exit out of this, you can see it now says declined. So yeah, this was an easy, quick breakdown of how you can handle these interactive responses um, of Slack within N8N using no code at all. Um, if you have any other questions or wanna see any other types or versions of this kind of workflow, comment them down below and we can kind of break them down together and figure it out. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos or anything that you want to see in N8N or not sure how to work something out, message me, leave a comment, um, and we can figure all of that out together. I do appreciate a lot of the support you guys have been giving on the previous videos, so I want to say a big thank you to that. And yeah, keep an eye out on the channel. I will be continuing to post some of these type of videos and hopefully helping you guys out along the way. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.